You're listening to Indications by the Conference Board. Welcome to the Conference Board's Indications podcast. Indications is a public podcast featuring our global roster of thought leaders. Topics range from economic growth and competitiveness to human capital, governance, sustainability, and beyond. Each episode is a serious conversation grounded in data and insights that will keep you ahead of the curve in a turbulent world. I am here with my colleague, Lynn Franco, Senior Director of Economic Indicators and Surveys at the Conference Board. Welcome, Lynn. It's always great to speak with you. Great to be back, and especially when there's good news to be shared. Absolutely. So let's discuss the most recent Consumer Confidence Survey. Well, we had another healthy increase in consumer confidence. We went from 109 even in March to 121.7. That's our highest reading since February. And much of that has been prompted by the improvement in current conditions, in particular the labor market. Excellent. So expectations were rosier in the report. Tell us about that. Yes, it seems that consumers are quite confident uh, that the economy is going to continue on this strong trajectory. Uh, There's also a positive sentiment regarding uh, the labor market, even though we saw both of those pull back a little bit, the overall level remains very optimistic. And this month, we saw an improvement in consumers' income expectations, uh, most likely a combination of uh, stimulus checks and a better labor market. I also saw that current conditions really surged in the month. What do the the data tell us about the vaccine effect on confidence? Well, we're seeing that it's having a very positive impact on consumer confidence. So we're getting fewer and fewer consumers who are expressing concerns about COVID-19. And as the vaccination efforts continue, we expect it to further boost consumer confidence. And it's most evident in consumers' travel plans. So if we take a look at the percent of consumers uh, planning to take a vacation over the next six months, that's increased. And in particular, those now willing to fly has increased as well. That's amazing. I'm certainly looking forward to traveling. So what about uh, easing in mobility restrictions? Are we seeing any evidence of that in the confidence data? I think that's what's helping to boost uh, not only consumer spending, but consumer confidence as consumers can now get out and about and do a little bit more than they could last month. And that's only going to improve in the coming months as we're seeing more and more restrictions lifted. So talk to us more about buying plans positive news on this front as well. Um, So we see that consumers are more likely to purchase an auto. We saw an uptick there. Uh, We saw an uptick in the percent of consumers who say they intend to purchase a home. And we've seen that also in some of the other housing data that the um, housing market remains hot. And there's no indication that we're going to get a pullback in either of these in the coming months. Well, Lynn, you mentioned that people are thinking about vacationing. Where are they going and how are they getting there? Well, so far, it looks like most of the travel will be domestic. Um, We didn't see an uptick in foreign travel. We've still got, uh, you know, about 24, 25% of consumers who say they prefer to drive, uh, but a big uptick in those willing to fly. Um, You know, uh, two months ago, it was at 15.7, and now we're up to 20.4. So we think as the uh, vaccine rollout continues and, um, you know, reopening continues, we're going to see more uh, consumers willing to fly, not only in the U.S., um, but we see that the EU is uh, contemplating loosening restrictions there as well. So there might be more travel abroad. This news is great and really dovetails with what we're hearing from airlines who anticipate a big surge in activity over the course of this year. So let's talk a little bit about differentiation by segment. What about age and income levels? How are different groups feeling? Well, we're seeing here that, um, you know, we've seen an improvement across all age groups, which is really great. So the under 35 had a nice uh, uptick and has over the last two months, even the 55 and older. And we think that's probably more correlated with a vaccination. So all age groups are more confident than they were a year ago and more confident than they were a few months ago. That's really fantastic that we're seeing better sentiment among the younger groups, especially since they tend to suffer the greatest during economic downturns. So what about regionally? Are we seeing anything uh, important across the United States in terms of confidence? 
I think what we're seeing is that the increases are a very widespread, right? But still, we have certain states in particular uh, that are leading the pack. So, for instance, Texas confidence is at 127.4. Florida is coming in at 133.5. And California, which had a pretty strong second wave, third wave, uh, is up to 132.1. So, very good news. However, on the flip side, you take a look at Michigan, where we saw a decrease, and we know that um, you know the COVID situation there has been worsening. But overall, still, it's above 100 and still in a positive range. So granted, there are some pockets where consumers are not as optimistic, but it sounds like for the most part across the U.S., we're seeing improved sentiment. So what factors do you think will help continue to support consumer confidence going forward? It's going to be what happens in terms of the pandemic that seems to be subsiding and also the job market. That's always been the key to consumer confidence. It's highly tied to consumers' financial situation. So as we begin to see sort of a turnaround, continued reopening and further job prospects, we can expect uh, consumers to remain confident for the remainder of the year. One final thing, Uh, we saw that uh, inflation expectations, at least over the next 12 months, really popped up in March. What happened in April? And what do you think of the drivers? Right now, it's holding steady. So it's still elevated. Consumers are still concerned about inflation. You know, the two drivers where consumers tend to get the most sticker shock are uh, prices at the gas pump and prices at the grocery store. Those are likely to remain uh, elevated. uh, But on the flip side, we saw income expectations increase. So it doesn't seem that um, this elevated inflation is uh, giving consumers a sense of diminished purchasing power. That's great. It looks like from the confidence data that people are still willing to go out there and spend, even though prices may be ticking up in some areas. Well, thank you so much, Lynn, for such great insights. Thank you. This has been Indications from the Conference Board. If you enjoyed this podcast, you may listen to additional Conference Board offerings by going to www.conference-board.org forward slash podcast or find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening. This has been Indications from the Conference Board.